The courthouses across Colorado are much more than judicial landmarks. Their geographic locations represent power, land status, and permanence. Hi, I'm John Ferrugia. In this episode of Colorado Experience, visit three courthouses differing in style, composition, and legend that have one thing in common. They created edifices of order in what was once called the Wild West. And now, Colorado Experience, courthouses. Courthouses are a sign of permanence in these volatile boomtown communities. They tell the world, we plan to be around for a while. This courthouse is a microcosm of our history. What is the role of a courthouse today? It is a place where you can see human aspiration to think hard and carefully about choices. Courthouses symbolize justice. They symbolize the fact that you will get a fair shake in Colorado. This program was funded by the History Colorado State Historical Fund. Supporting projects throughout the state to preserve, protect, and interpret Colorado's architectural and archaeological treasures. History Colorado State Historical Fund. Create the future. Honor the past. With support from the Denver Public Library, History Colorado. With additional funding and support from these fine organizations. And viewers like you. Thank you. The atmosphere in Colorado before the era of the courthouse builders was terribly chaotic and disturbingly violent and at other times just people trading, people doing stuff, people figuring out how to negotiate with each other, tribal societies with a good sense of order and with a sense of how you deal with people who aren't performing as they ought to. The Pikes Peak Gold Rush was an amazing time. Tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of people rushed into Colorado within the space of a couple of summers. Colorado went from a European-American population of a very, very few to almost 40,000 by 1860. And they brought with them a lot of traditions, but what they didn't bring was a stable sense of law and order. There's a bunch of strangers in here, and they're just trying to figure each other out. Colorado was, in fact, part of four different Western territories, each which had a competing jurisdiction over different parts of what would become our state. And so miners, really were on their own devices at the beginning and in order to institute law and order. They had to improvise and come up with miners' courts or vigilante groups. Vigilantes were a common theme in mountain towns, mining towns. People didn't think that the law acted quickly enough and often took matters into their own hands. It's all well and good for a vigilante group to go after accused murderers and shave off half of their hair, kick them out of town or hang them, but what if that group loses control? There's no check to that kind of vigilante authority. That's why we need courts. Courts are essential to adjudicate property disputes, to enforce laws and regulations, to provide a sense of fairness to the accused. And without those systems in place, you're teetering just on the wrong side of anarchy in Colorado's early pioneer communities. Gold miners brought with them was a really strong sense of local government and self-sovereignty. We can set up our own institutions of government. The miners' courts usually recruited local attorneys to come in. They might adopt some rules from another state or territory, but the courts themselves were held in whatever building was available. Mining communities in particular were so volatile that people didn't think to build a courthouse right away. And in fact, the mining camp might not last long enough to be worth the investment. Statehood is really the tipping point for okay, now we're gonna do it, and that we'll make it clear that this is a place where we are settling in and taking ourselves seriously as a civic community. So Lake City was part of that. We're here, and it's going to be a boom, and we're going to be here for a spell, and it's gonna go well. Hinsdale County is located right in the heart of the Rocky Mountains, certainly not an easy place to get into and out of. It's the most remote county in the lower 48 states due to the lack of access. Lake City's origins go back to its initial cabin, which was built here by Enos Hotchkiss in August of 1874. He was building a toll road through this area, and he discovered a rich mine in the process called the Hotchkiss Mine, which was later renamed the Golden Fleece, and that had rich silver and gold in it. And when news of that got out, it caused a stampede. Lake City immediately went from a couple hundred people to 4,000 people. The residents who moved here planted trees along the street, as we'd know, people who would plant trees would expect to be here a while. 
Schools were established. We had five churches within a very short time. That's not to say that we didn't have other entertainment as well. There were a large saloon and red light district. So as part of that development, we had a courthouse from the very earliest years. The Hinsdale County Courthouse is interesting because it represents a stage in the evolution of mining camps. The first stage of a mining community is usually a city of tents and log cabins that might only last until the gold and silver runs out. But if the town survives that first stage, Town builders usually try to start building a more stable community and they start building out of frame structures. The courthouse was built in June of 1877, probably considered a temporary structure at that time that once Lake City boomed and we doubled our population again, we would have a stone or a brick courthouse. That boom never came though. For most of the folks engaged in that, this was gonna be a really big deal. This county was gonna be it. The Hinsdale County Courthouse sort of represents the evolution of Lake City and how it was really only in the second stage, the semi-stable stage of mining camp development. The courthouse, when it was built, was one of the larger structures in Lake City. It's a beautiful building. You can see in historic photos, the two stories was a big deal. The whiteness of the courthouse was a big deal. It's also unique in the fact that it is wood frame Italianate construction and architectural design. That's unique in a state where a lot of our big iconic buildings were made of stone or brick. They were so eager to move in that they set out in invitations for a grand ball that was going to be held in the upstairs courtroom. The complication, however, in 1877, there's no railroad. Everything had to be shipped in by ox cart and wagon. When they sent out the invitations for this grand ball, weeks after they'd started the building, they didn't realize that the windows hadn't arrived. So they went ahead and had an orchestra up here and people in their finery showed up. There were carriages that lined up outside and the ball did take place, but it was without windows. So it was a little bit drafty. Pioneer courthouses were in every sense a community center. It was a place to see and be seen. It was a place to do business and to participate in politics. Politics. People who would cast their ballots or come to this courthouse for a trial would start days in advance before they actually arrived. They braved snowstorms and mountain passes that were closed. And once they were here, they'd tend to stay for a few days. Hence, you do your shopping, you do your entertainment, and this was the social center. Colorado became a state in 1876, and one of the provisions of statehood was that Colorado would very quickly hold a referendum on whether or not to grant women the right to vote. The editor of The Silver World was well acquainted with Susan B. Anthony. He invited her to come to Lake City. On September 19th, 1877, she arrived here somewhat dusty and careworn after riding side saddle for 81 miles from Del Norte. In the next day, went to work on the notes for a two hour speech. That speech was scheduled in the upstairs courtroom. The response was overwhelming. Two hours before the speech was to be delivered, it was packed. They overflowed the courthouse and had to actually move her remarks outside. As many as 300 people, a fair number of women, majority men, lined up outside in the cool evening hours on September 20th to hear Susan B. Anthony. She spoke for two hours. Hinsdale County voters politely listened with rapt attention. And it was inspirational enough to get some of the men in the audience to agree to support women's suffrage. However, suffrage failed in 1877. Among those 300 men that were in the audience that night was a young attorney by the name of J. Warner Mills. Mills was inspired by her speech. Mills ended up in Denver in the 1890s, and Mills is credited as the author of the Colorado Equal Rights Amendment. We were the second state to pass women's suffrage, and that was in 1894. But from a Lake City perspective, we inspired that because he was among the audience that night on September 20th, 1877. The courthouse has been the scene of many great trials through the years. One of the best known was in April of 1883 when Alfred Packer, who was accused of killing five companions in 1874, was tried in this courtroom. This was his first trial. He happened to be in Utah in November of 1873 when there was news of big mineral strikes that were taking place in Colorado Territory. Packer and five other men headed up the Lake Fork, which was a wild and unknown area at that time, and certainly not one to be traversed in January and February of 1874. The next we know is that Packer by himself, without those five men, show up at the Las Pinas Indian Agency, apparently well-fed, and suspiciously having more money than he started with, as well as having the guns that belonged to his companions and it was in August of 1874 that unsuspecting individuals came across the bodies of those five men. They were hurriedly buried, but it was noted that the flesh had been systematically removed from those bones. 
Packer was immediately jailed in Sawatch. He escaped, however, and it wasn't until 1883 that he was recaptured in Wyoming, brought to Lake City, and put on trial. He wasn't charged with cannibalism, as is often stated. He was charged with killing those five fellow men. There wasn't anything particular on the books to keep you from eating an individual. He was found guilty of murder. He was sentenced to be hanged. In the courtroom, we have on display the original judge's declaration, which ends with, may you be hanged until you're dead, dead, dead. Lake City was so excited at the prospect of this that they sent out invitations and local women started packing picnic lunches to go to Alfred Packer's hanging. But then he got off on a technicality in that Hinsdale County had not existed at the time of the alleged crime. He was jailed in Gunnison until 1886 when he was tried again and was found guilty at that time. And rather than being hanged, he was sentenced to life imprisonment in the Canyon City Penitentiary. The Bent County Courthouse stands proud in the town of Las Animas in southeast Colorado. The story of this courthouse is an interesting one, as the railroad dictated a change of county seat prior to the construction of this magnificent edifice. When Bent County was officially incorporated in 1870, its original location was the community of Bogsville, really interesting multicultural community of cattle ranchers and fur traders who had come together. The Bog family and the Prowers family really represented the first county authority. But when the railroad arrived in Los Animas, Bogsville's fortunes really declined. The county seat was moved from Bogsville to Los Animas. Wherever you go, if you're talking about the last few decades of the 19th century, you are going to encounter the force of a railroad in that story. Developers get to work and they lay out towns, and then a railroad manager will say, we don't want to go there. And so good luck to the town founders who thought this is where it's going to be. So adapting to nature, that's important, but adapting to railroad companies' wills, that's just about as important if you want to have a town that persists. Bent County is in the southeast corner of Colorado. There was some controversy around the creation of the Bent County Courthouse. In the late 1880s, southeastern Colorado was undergoing a land rush as farmers began moving into southeastern Colorado to take up dry land farms under the Homestead Act. The construction of the courthouse was approved in 1886 by the voters. Bent County was much larger than it is today. So the voters in Cheyenne Wells and La Junta and all those communities voted yes to build a courthouse in Los Angeles. Now on July 4th of the following year, 1887, was when the cornerstone was laid for this building. But the story gets very interesting when it was election time. Cheyenne Wells didn't like paying for a $30 round trip train ticket to come to Los Angeles to take care of county business. Their local newspaper was very, very aggressive in trying to promote change. In fact, they were successful. They changed from a Democrat county commission to a Republican. So on July 9, 1888, not this courthouse, but the courthouse that served the county burned down. That was six hours before the Democrat commissioners would be turning all the records over to the new administration. So we had no county records at that time. The courthouse though was finished being built in November of 1888. The furniture was received in March and that's when the county began occupying this building. Also, at that exact same time, the state legislature changed the size of Bent County. Bent County was separated into a number of other counties. In fact, 13 new counties were created in southeastern Colorado in 1889. Those other counties or residents had to pay taxes, though, to repay the bonds for this courthouse, which was a bitter pill for them to swallow, but they had, in fact, supported it and were obligated. So a lot of our neighbors paid for the Bent County Courthouse, much to their dislike. They talk about grain elevators as being the cathedrals of the plains. You can see these edifices from a long way away. On the Great Plains, the building with the next most stature is the county courthouse. These buildings rise up out of the prairies. They represent the stability of government. They represent the aspirations of the community. And the Bent County Courthouse is a particularly good example. It's a monumental building. It has elements of Greek architecture. It stands there on the plains as a monument to stability and authority and democracy. Law enforcement and local government government in the 1880s was very much needed. If you look back, there were murders, there was dishonesty, just like we have today. But I don't know that it was entirely necessary to build a structure exactly like this one. The folks in Cheyenne Wells, that's exactly what they were complaining about, that the folks in Los Angeles were taking advantage of the taxpayers in the rest of the county. So whether it was necessary to build something like this, I'm not certain, but I'm glad they did. The Bent County Courthouse was actually built utilizing local sandstone from a quarry nearby and also local brick. 
Ultimately, the brick that is on the exterior of the building came from St. Louis. The locally manufactured brick, it wasn't hard enough, didn't withstand water, it wanted to crumble. We have the writings of a young lady. She writes in her memoirs that she attended a dance here on New Year's Eve, 1888, and they danced in every room throughout the courthouse. There was a big celebration, and that was the opening of the courthouse. We do know the courthouse lawn area was used for community events. In 1921, there was a murder out on one of the creeks here outside of town. Two guys were fighting over water, which isn't uncommon in Colorado. One man shot the other, and uh, Mr. Ham, it was his name, he died. But what we found in the minutes was the county commissioners had paid the local Ford dealer in 1921 to disassemble a Model T Ford bring it up into this room and reassemble it as part of the evidence. The fellow who shot him was actually found not guilty. In isolated areas such as the county of Uray, vigilantes often took the law into their own hands. After Colorado Territory transformed into a state and mining claims ruled city conflict, a need for established order became apparent. Uray was a silver mining community that dates back to the 1870s, and it was named after one of the leading chiefs of the Utes, the young Compagre Ute leader, Uray. Uray is situated in a beautiful mountain valley. It's the home of the Ute Indians. They spent their summers in Uray and up in the mountains above Uray, and their winters down in the Compagre Valley. The miners themselves were very sensitive to the fact that they were interlopers on land that was traditionally claimed by the Ute people. The first settlers arrived in the early 1860s. They were prohibited from coming here, but of course they were seeking gold and silver and they came anyway. It was originally started as a mining town. There are a lot of mines up in the hills around here. The town of Uray was founded in 1876. Uray originally had up to 5,000 or more people as inhabitants. There was a red light district, there was a financial district, mine assay offices, there were multiple grocery stores, there was a hospital, a school. Between 1876 and when the courthouse was built in 1888, the county rented rooms in various buildings around Uray. The citizens of the county were unhappy about having to go to two or three different buildings to do their business, and so they petitioned the county to build a courthouse. So the courthouse was built out of necessity. And the Solid Muldoon campaigned for building of a courthouse, and the editor would shame the town for not having this imposing building that would ensure the permanence of Uray for many, many years to come. And in 1888, in April, the county passed a bond issue for $20,000 to build a courthouse. Well, it does speak to the prosperity of Uray in the 1880s. The voters were willing to vote to use their tax money to pay for a very expensive county courthouse. Uray in the late 1880s was at the peak of its silver boom, and so probably local residents felt that they could easily afford to build a building with stability and security. Historically, this courthouse is an architectural gem. It was designed by the same architects who built the Beaumont Hotel, which is also a prominent building in Uray. And the courthouse contract was awarded to Francis Carney. Francis was a resident of Uray, and he had a big edge up on the other people who submitted contracts because he owned a brickyard in Uray. And the railroad had come to Uray in December of 1887. All the wood furnishings came into Uray by train, and the courthouse was finished and occupied in March of 1888. That kind of more formal architecture for a courthouse is certainly a way of saying, we're here. When the building was first built, it was the biggest building in town. The chairs inside the courtroom have some wires on them, and there's some wire underneath the seats. Those are used for cowboy hats. Take your cowboy hat off, turn it upside down, and slide it into those wires underneath the seats. When the courthouse was first built, the Uray Volunteer Fire Department was in the courthouse. They had these large carts that contained the hoses and had pumps on them, and they were horse-drawn. The carts were stored in this building on the ground floor. Horses would have been stored at a livery stable in town, and so when there was a fire alarm, the men would have gotten the horses, brought them over to the courthouse, hitched them up to the horse carts, and gone to the fire. One of the great things about these little Colorado towns like Uray is that they attract Hollywood. The courthouse in Uray served as one of the sets for the John Wayne movie, True Grit. I started my over 46 years in law enforcement in 1968 on the police department in Montrose. That was the year that True Grit was made. 
and the movie company hired us on our days off to do security. There's probably 95% of the movie was filmed in the Ridgeway Ray area. The courthouse scene in True Grit was filmed right in this building. When John Wayne leaves the courtroom and he starts down the stairs and he stops to roll a roll your own cigarette and that's on a landing on the stairway down here. He goes on down the stairs and walks out through the front doors and through the magic of movies. When he walks through the doors, he walks into the park in Ridgeway. Makes it look like this courthouse is in Ridgeway. If you're a resident here, that's a really, really funny scene. It just really speaks to the time capsule quality of towns like Uray that so much of the build environment is authentic to the frontier period that it feels authentic for Hollywood to come out and use these as a set. When John Wayne goes somewhere, people pay attention. The Hollywood filmmakers knew what they were doing when they picked the Western locale. We don't go to see Midwesterns, we don't go to see Southerns, we go to see Westerns. In a state where the Wild West was conquered by civility and order, modern day conveniences, aesthetic, and the temptation of the new resulted in the destruction of numerous historical structures. Many who honor the structural symbolism of the past are actively preserving tangible buildings for future generations. Not every Colorado community has preserved its original courthouses. They've been lost to fires or neglect or become outdated. But the communities that still host their original courthouses can look at their system of government and see the continuity that takes place over time. Historic courthouses are remarkable three-dimensional invitations into the past. To walk over the threshold literally is to go in the footsteps of our predecessors. The courthouse in Uray helps contribute to the historical significance of that community. The building is remarkable in that it looks almost exactly like it looked when it was completed in 1888. To have a building that still functions 125 years later in its original intent and is capable of being run as the county nerve center is unique. The original brick has been painted over red. That's the only change to the outside of the courthouse. Inside the courthouse, there's some electronics that have been added over the years, but the furniture, the seating in the courtroom is the same as it was when it was built. Uray is a national historic site, and this courthouse is one of the premier structures in the county. People really can only appreciate history when they become enmeshed in the buildings and the sites. There's a grant application to restore the courthouse to its original that includes taking the paint off of the ceiling. They painted over what they call wallpaper or stencil, and they've taken some paint off to see what's under it. It really looks interesting. Our plan is to repair the exterior to its original form and also make sure that the interior is fitted out to carry the county forward into the next 125 years. And the courthouse in Hinsdale County really shows us our hard scrabble origins and how important it was to build symbols of civic government and democracy in volatile mining communities. The fact that the building never burned, that we have a courthouse that dates to 1877, we've never lost any of our records. In Lake City, there are certain buildings that define how the community looks. The Hinsdale County Courthouse is an iconic building in our community. As a centerpiece of Lake City and Hinsdale County history, it's important to bring this building back to its original appearance. In 2010, we spent a year working with architects and engineers to determine all of the needs of the building. And so what we found was a critical issue of our courthouse sinking, especially on three sides and floor joists beginning to rot. That made the courthouse project rise to the top of the list for the Hinsdale County Commissioners. For us in Lake City, there's no separation between restoring and embracing the heritage and our lives today. It's part of the charm of Lake City. And a courthouse like the Bank County Courthouse is an architectural gem in this rural community. It's the largest building in Los Animas and maybe even in Bank County. But for many years, it was not well maintained. The county assessor came to the commissioners and said, you know, I really need to do something in our office. And one of the towers was pulling away from his office a little bit. It was in horrible shape. We were in a situation where we either needed to build something somewhere else 
or preserve this structure. So ultimately what turned out to be a renovation of one office turned into a complete renovation that had not truly had a good sprucing up since the very beginning. This project was done to preserve a, a historic landmark, but it was also our intent to make sure we had a building that met the needs of modern America, and it would serve our community many years into the future. As Colorado's historic courthouses continue to act as the judicial focal point of their communities, they serve as a reminder of Colorado's growth and transformation since first becoming the Centennial State. To walk in those footsteps and to walk into those buildings is to be not exactly in the company of the people of the past, but it's really a big series of steps in that direction. Having the opportunity to have something that represents the history of Colorado and the history of Southeast Colorado is extremely important. With the renovation of this building and the landscaping work we've done, it's a landmark on Highway 50 that we're very proud of. The courthouse in Hinsdale County is the oldest courthouse that's still used for its original function on the western slope of Colorado. It's an integral feature of the Lake City Historic District. It's important to preserve the Hinsdale Courthouse because it illustrates a 19th century way of life that has vanished. This courthouse is a microcosm of our history. The hope is that we continue to use our courthouse for at least 140 more years. The chairs that still furnish this room are the same chairs that spectators to Susan B. Anthony or to the Packer trial sat in. The judge's bench is the same bench that Judge Gary delivered the guilty verdict of Packer in 1883 this building embodies the most perfect representation of our county and town's history. The county courthouse is an iconic building in the city of Uray and for Uray County. And the fact that the building is still used shows the citizens of Uray are very proud of this building. As long as this town is in existence, this courthouse will be used. We always have needed courthouses in the volatile mining past or in our present day. Courthouses represent the order that we all depend on in order to live in a place like Colorado.